Welcome to our review on selective breeding. First thing we need to know then is what is selective breeding? Quite simply, selective breeding is the process by which humans breed other animals or plants together for particular characteristics. And a couple of key examples might be for high yields or for disease resistance. So the way we actually carry this out then has five key steps. First step is we identify the characteristic that we desire or want. Secondly, we then select the parents that have got high levels of that characteristic. So on the left, you can see we've got a range of different sheep and then we've got two that are very woolly. So we want woolly sheep, so we pick the two woolliest. We then breed them together and then we select the best offspring and breed those again. So you can see in their offspring, some had lots of wool, others didn't. So we select the ones with the most wool, breed them together. And then when you continue this for many generations, eventually we end up with all of the sheep being very woolly. One of the questions they could ask you around selective breeding is to do with percentiles. And hopefully this is something you've done in your maths lessons, but just in case we'll recap it here. With our percentiles, what we have to do is start off by placing all of your data in ranked positions, which is what I've done on the right there. So you can see all we've done is we've got the masses increasing and the number of sheep of each mass. If we're talking about the median, then that would be the 50th percentile. So in this case, we've got 200 sheep. So wherever sheep 100 is, then that would be your 50th percentile. The top 25% of our results are at or above the 75th percentile. So if we look at one particular example, then if we've got 200 sheep, our median, so our hundredth sheep is found at number 40 there, so 40 kilograms. Because if you count up how many sheep there are when you hit number 100, it falls into the 40 kilogram category. If we wanted to calculate the 75th percentile, then what we have to do is 200 times 75%, so 0.75, and that tells us it's 150. So all we do again is find where the 150th sheep is starting from number one. And in this case, we find that that's at 42 kilograms. So one of the key aspects of selective breeding, as we said earlier, is to increase the yield. And one of the key examples of where we've carried that out is in wheat production. So what we can see is a nice little table there comparing the wild wheat plants to our modern wheat plants, which have been selectively bred. So what we can see is if we just compare their key features, then on the left, we can see the wild wheat plant there, which has only got very small ears with only very few seeds on it. The stalks are brittle and the ears often fall off them. The ears will ripen at different times and the stalks all grow to different heights. So none of that makes it great for harvesting large yields at one point of time. Whereas our modern wheat plant, you can see on the right there, have got these larger ears with many seeds. The stalks are stronger, so the ears stay on them. They all ripen at the same time and all the stalks grow to the same height, which means that when we're using machinery to harvest, we get all of those seeds. While selective breeding has many advantages, as we've seen, it's not all good news. There are also some disadvantages that we should be aware of. First of all, it's going to reduce the variation within the gene pool because it reduces the number of alleles present. If you imagine you're always selecting for certain features, then you're going to be selecting for certain alleles each time. So there's going to be a narrower selection of alleles. And as a result of this, it means they're potentially more susceptible to disease. So bananas, for example, all come from one type of banana plant these days in most of our shops in the UK. So one disease could wipe out virtually all the banana plants in the world. The other problem we've got is that it increases the risk of inheriting a genetic disease. So again, because we're narrowing our gene pool, then what we're doing is we're increasing the likelihood that recessive alleles are going to be inherited in twos. So that means recessive diseases will be seen more frequently. 
Hopefully at the end of this video you can describe what selective breeding is, you can explain how we carry it out and how to calculate percentiles, but also highlight some of the disadvantages of this process.